Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a book review for you. This is on one of the books that I did a very brief review on in my 18 Thrillers in 11 Days Challenge that I did for myself. Um, I uploaded the video a few days ago, and if you want to go check that out, I'll link the, dis uh, the link to the video below. This was actually the book that I ranked the highest because in that video I did worst to best and I gave sort of a brief description of the book and sort of why I ranked it the way I did. And this was the top. This was my favorite out of all 18 books. And that book is Recursion by Blake Crouch. I'm going to read the inside flap to you and then we're just going to get right on into the review. Memory makes reality. That's what New York City cop Barry Sutton is learning as he investigates the devastating phenomenon the media has dubbed false memory syndrome, a mysterious affliction that drives its victims mad with memories of a life they never lived. That's what neuroscientist Helena Smith believes. It's why she's dedicated her life to creating a technology that will let us preserve our most precious memories. If she succeeds, anyone will be able to re-experience a first kiss, birth of a child, final moment with a dying parent. As Barry searches for the truth, he comes face to face with an opponent more terrifying than any disease, a force that attacks not just our minds, but the very fabric of the past. And as its effects begin to unmake the world as we know it, only he and Helena working together will stand a chance at defeating it. But how can they make a stand when reality itself is shifting and crumbling all around them? All right, so this book was so incredibly good. I didn't really know too much about it. I know that uh, it's by the author of the Wayward Pine series, and he also did Dark Matter, and he's done some other sci-fi thrillers, or um, I think he did a couple horror books early on in his career. Um, and I've read the first book in the Wayward Pine series and thought it was very good. And I had started reading Dark Matter. Um, I had to return it at the library, so unfortunately I didn't get very far into it. And it was very interesting. I was very um, intrigued by it, but I had to set it down and I just haven't been able to pick it up. So uh, this was pretty much my second Blake Crouch book, and I thought it was so, so good in terms of a book that just sucks you in and just keeps you, you know, trying to figure out what's going next and it really makes you think. I love books like that, and I also enjoy science fiction too, and I enjoy thrillers, so the fact that this is sort of a sci-fi thriller was just a great combo for me, and I think it worked very well because it's gripping. I pretty much read this in almost one sitting. I just took a couple small breaks here and there because life, you know, but if I had an option, I just would have not ever put it down because it was just really just so good. So this story follows our two main characters. We have Barry Sutton and we have Dr. Helena, I forgot, Helena Smith. That's right, it was some kind of generic last name. So Barry and Helena. And it's told, especially at the beginning, in a dual timeline. Um, so you have Helena, who's in 2018, uh, 2008, and you have Barry, who's in 2018. And at some point the timelines do come together because I know that there are some people out there, um, I'm actually included, where I don't mind a dual timeline as long as it makes sense for the story. And th it really does make sense for the story in this because there's, um, this doesn't just deal with memories but it also has a little bit with time. I don't want to say anything more though because I think going into this book not knowing a whole lot about the plot is very good and I don't want to be the one to spoil it for anybody because I liked just seeing all the twists and turns that this book was taking and it starts out you know sort of a smaller story and it ends up becoming a much bigger story much bigger than I anticipated going into it um, I had no idea that it was going to be come what it became and I thought that was great um, and I happen to find memories just very fascinating just why we remember certain things, how we remember certain things, how we perceive reality, how we think about other people and how they, you can have, you know, two people experience the same thing and have different memories and it's very trippy, I've always thought. Um, like sometimes if you think too much about it, it's it like, all of a sudden you're like, what's real, what's not? And that's what this book really explores a lot of is, um, you know, what's real, what's not, can you trust your memories, how 
if you can't trust your memories, how is that going to impact you as a human being? How is that going to impact your relationships? How is that going to impact your future? And in this book, um, like with false memory syndrome in particular, it starts driving a lot of people to suicide because either they have memories of a life that was better or they also can no longer trust themselves. And that's a very scary thing to no longer be able to trust who you are because really what are we but a collection of our memories of our past if you erase that or if you alter it do you change the person so there's just a lot of things this book brings up and it does it too in a way where you're still enjoying the story but you can still really think about it things as well it's not just like this book where you're just like you know it, it's definitely a book that moves at a very fast pace which I enjoyed. I, I like all types of books. I don't mind a slow burn as long as it's worth it in the end. Um, I don't like a plot to move too fast where it leaves behind um, information that you would need or it leaves behind character development and other important things. So I think having a nice balance of how quickly your book is moving is important and I feel like this achieved that. Um, I would say that it does balance plot and characters pretty well. I would say it leans a little bit more towards the plot though as opposed to the characters. So I know some people who are really into character driven stories and have to have really really fleshed out characters might not be into this one as much. I'm not saying that the character- I didn't think the characters were flat. You definitely get a sense of them and a sense of their relationships and sense of who they are as people. It just it's not- you, you don't ever like ruminate on them. You don't really they, they aren't as fleshed out as some other characters and some of the other books that I had recently read, so... Um, but, but the plot is awesome, and the concepts are spectacular, and I am not a scientist. Um, you know, I majored in history, and I tend to focus more on the humanity side, um, or biology is my favorite hard science. Um, so if... and there's, like, some physics and some, like, neuro science in here. I can't say if it's accurate or not. Um, I think sometimes that helps me in some of these books where I can just like enjoy it and enjoy the concept and not um, take it apart. So I know like maybe some people who are very scientific, I, I don't know the accuracy of the science behind this, but just keep in mind it's science fiction and it's it's fiction. So, you know, as long as you can kind of set that aside, I think it'll still be very enjoyable for a vast majority of people, and especially like the concept of um, like reliving your memories or going back to a memory. I, I would really like to do that. I don't know if I would want to go in depth and, and explore what this is doing and I, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but, but I think the whole idea of trying to preserve memories and like relive them is very cool and if we came up with something like that I would really like it because my memories are super important to me. I'm a very nostalgic person and um, also too like if there was a way to like catalog memories there's so much potential for like historians and anthropologists and, and all of that and psychologists there, there's just so much so um, I loved this book a lot and I could see them making this into a series or a movie but I feel like it works better as a book I'll still check it out if they do because somebody had told me that they were that there's a potential for this turning into a book or a movie, uh, or sorry, a movie or a TV show. We'll have to see how it goes because I just feel like there's a lot going on in this and there is kind of some, sort of like in with Inception where there's, it could be confusing if you aren't paying attention. Um, I didn't think this was confusing, but there's definitely like some jumping around in, in uh, time and and memories and people and and all that so as long as you like keep things straight and kind of explain things I think it would be a very interesting mini-series or movie but yeah so I recommend this for people who love thrillers especially sci-fi thrillers I also recommend it for people who like science fiction or for people who just like to read a very unique story or books that really make you think that stick with you like this is still stuck with me and I read this like gosh well over a week ago now um, and I'm still thinking about it and just yeah this was 
really what I wanted in a book that I couldn't put down in a gripping story. So overall, this is a 5 out of 5 star read for me. I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Let me know what you think and please leave me a comment, rate, subscribe down below, and I'll be doing a few more thriller reviews coming up shortly. So thank you so much for watching my video and I will talk to you guys later. Happy reading. Bye.